Welcome back to the Compressor Guru. This is the intake valve, and I don't remember if this is the high side or the low side, but the intake valves are identical. Uh, I'm guessing this is the high side because it's got a little more carbon, carbon on it. We didn't tear it down in the teardown video, but we're going to tear it down now because we are going to change the valve disc and the valve springs, but I want to show you how this comes apart. Very easy. There's four notches in the bottom. Set your vise so it catches. You put a pipe wrench, a uh, screwdriver, uh, anything straight, just put through the hole and there's a little quarter inch uh, two-sided dowel that holds the top and the bottom half together here. And this is the valve disc. That's part number 1846, I think. And it's in beautiful condition. And so is the valve face. And there's the spring. I don't know if we got the old type. This is the old style spring. I don't know if we got the old style or the new style to replace it. But uh, it's that simple to tear your intake valve apart. Show you just real quick what we're looking for on the tear down and evaluation on this. And you might want to move in on this valve. And I don't have a bad valve here because I recently had a scrap day. If I had a bad valve here, I could show you, but see that inner circle and that outer circle? If there's any dings in that or badly worn parts, that won't seat. What you have, you have a metal on metal seat and it has to be really good or it's going to let air by and the compressor is not going to pump. And does it look good? Yeah, it looks very good. Thought so, a little discoloration, but I know for a fact all these valves were holding uh, air because when I was washing them, they were holding uh, the fuel. That's a check. You can put fuel in the top side of the intakes, and if they hold fuel in the cavity in here, in this cavity, you put fuel in it, or gasoline or water and if it keeps that in there for say a minute that's good enough of a seal that it's going to hold air. This is interesting this one's a little dirtier much dirtier but even being dirty the Even being dirty, the valve surface where the valve plate, uh, the valve disc itself runs, is in very nice shape. So that's two valves that we don't have to replace. All we'll do is put new spring in a valve disc later. Now your intake valves give you just a little bit more trouble because there's, this is smooth all the way around, and you can't just put it in a vise and crank it down. You'll break this. What I do, these are a 516 bolt, and they'll fit in that bottom cavity very nicely. So, put one in one side, one in the other. Put the two bolts in your vise. Tighten your vise up. change, go to a different valve, and very simply, grab, grab yourself a 5 8 wrench on the bigger valves for the 350 up through the 5120s, it takes 3 quarter wrench on the top, and this is carboned up pretty good. 
because this bolt should turn the whole way through. But for now, I'll, I have a little more clean up to do. But for now, we're just inspecting. That looks good. And that's a beautiful example of an exhaust valve that uh, is in good shape. Once again, we will change the spring and the valve disc in this. I'll clean it up because this bolt actually should come out and I'll get that freed up. We'll get all the old carbon out of that and I'll reassemble that off camera. And one more to go. I didn't have to reset my bolts. When I'm doing a complete machine by myself, I'm not slowing myself down for camera angles and those kind of things. Oh, this one's... There we go. Uh, once I put those two bolts in, it, I only do the, in, the discharge valves until it's time to... Uh, uh, until I'm done with them. That way I don't have to get my bolts because sometimes they don't just line up as well as they did there. Another good example of a nice condition on the discharge valve. You got that? Okay, I will clean these up if you have a, if you have a chip, if you have a pit mark from rust. If you have any damage to those inner and outer circles, you're buying a valve. And unfortunately, valves are pretty pricey. In other episodes, we've been doing different sections of this 325 rebuild. Uh, right now, we're going to put some valves together. We tore them apart a little while ago, and uh, since then, I've cleaned them up off camera. And we're going to show you how easy these are to go back together, especially the discharge or exhaust valves. This is the valve. It is cleaned up, believe it or not. It was a very carbon mess before. These are the new style springs, which I do like much better than those uh, ones we pulled out. I don't have one here to show you the difference, but this is the new style spring with this is actually setting upside down right now, and it's as simple as setting the valve spring there, setting the disc on top, put it down, squeeze it together. Did you hear that little click? There's an elevated edge right there. Where? Right there. <laughs> There's an elevated edge right there. Those two. Uh, concentric circles uh, are slightly above the rest of it and if you look at this there's four little legs protruding out from an airspace right here so when you put it on here you heard it click that's where it's supposed to be just hang on to it tight put your bolt in put your bolt in I could do this for the other camera, but <laughs> so 5 8 wrench, tighten it up. Now, before we go back to the vise for our final uh, tightening, we're going to set it in this bucket. And Val, this is going to be all about you. Hmm. We're going to set it in this bucket. We're going to have to look down in there. And this is not green tea. This is not booze. This is gasoline. We're going to take. And if that stays in there for 10, 15 seconds, that's a good valve. If it wasn't a good valve, it would have ran out just like that. That valve is ready to be tightened up. And that's the simple test, a nice thin light fluid. And this is the way the check valve works. Your valves in the compressor are nothing but 
check valves. What were you wiggling in there? Oh, the, this, this disc. And there's oh. a spring underneath it. Oh, okay. So you were just pressing down on it yep. when you were in there. And that disc is up against those two concentric circles. Oh. And that is a neat enough of a fit with a little bit of spring pressure. And I'm not even putting two ounces of pressure on that valve disc. And that's a neat enough fit between those machine surfaces that that will hold liquid and it will hold air. Okay. So that one's ready to go back together. Let's put the other intake or discharge valve together. Don't let me take a sip of that. I wondered I, how, where you got that ice water from. <laughs> okay, very simple. Put our spring in there. Put our valve there. Squeeze it together and I'll do it this way for that camera this time. <coughs> By the way, I got the bolt out. I cleaned it up on the wire brush, so it made this part easy. Okay. Get a little tension on it. Okay. So that's one of those bolts you had to soak in gasoline or in oil over there, huh? Yes, it was in gas. And set that in there. And sometimes. If I have a problem getting them together, I make sure the valve disc moves because you can pinch that disc and needless to say at that point it won't seal, but you can pinch that disc if you let it get out of place, which is much more common on the intake side. This is the discharge side. I think this looks good. Yes, it does. That's another one ready to go. We're flying. We're flying. Okay, let's do the intakes or suction valves. Now this side does not go as well. Now don't jinx yourself. I'm not jinxing myself. This is gonna be easy. It's all easy. So this is the side the spring goes in. This is upside down. The valve actually goes like that. It's upside down. And that will match up to those two concentric circles on there. And this uh, won't be quite as easy. By the way, this is brand new. It doesn't matter. There's no upside or downside. And this is what I was playing with over there with a small screwdriver with the old disc showing you how to get it lined up. And if there's somebody else out there that has an easy way of doing this, put it in the comments. our pins and springs and that's dirty and you can it's even warped hold from, it from age. I'm gonna hold it still I gotta well, maybe get something. It's okay <laughs> as long as I know where it's at. Okay. Is that so, a spring? That's a spring. Ah. And a new one? I got new ones. And I'll stick them in here. One spring in each hole. And then the pins go down in the hole. And the only reason I'm putting these in right now is because I can't reach through with the pocket knife to unload the intake valve. It doesn't fit that way. So we set it in here. And we'll 
pour a little gas in. Now, you might need a little help. That's the port we're going for. Let me just do it to widen my... What port are we going for? We're going to, oh, we're those just going to, down we're going to hold liquid in here. Okay. This is the way the valve sets in the machine. And that's holding rather nicely. Push on the pins. Yep, yeah. and that's how the unloader works. The unloader works by putting pressure on these pins and disabling the valve. Okay, before you sit down, if you slide this to that side, no, 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 the thing on the inside, that would make it easier to be able to see that. Well, for short people. No, for people that shoot from this side of the. That shoot from the hip. Yeah. I'm not doing myself any good, folks. Last valve. Same thing, just repeating it. Okay. We put the spring in. We put the disc in. And put them together. Bend them together. And you go, gee, this is pretty easy work. This is pretty easy work. All the cleaning that got to get me to this point, it's not so easy work. <laughs> and that's why we don't videotape it. This is not Micro's dirty jobs. But that could have been. Oh, that, that teardown was a dirty job. Part of the reason I believe this channel is uh, becoming successful is because something Mike Rowe preaches about, and that is that there's not enough tradesmen out there now. You guys are probably watching this because you, A, you want to do it yourself, B, you can't find anybody in your area that does this kind of work, or C, you can't afford the guys to do this kind of work. Uh, it's not uncommon for guys in my position in the city to be getting $100 to $120 an hour uh, shop rate. So, anyway, it's good to have a skill, it's good to have a trade, and Mike Rowe preaches that a lot. College isn't the only road. Don't you have something to do in the other end of that? Oh, I guess I could put my pins and screws in. <laughs> Thank you, babe. She's on me all the time, folks. Makes you wonder how he does this without me. You didn't know what I did until we were married five or six years. I'm still not quite sure what you did. <laughs> okay. I teach music, and that's what was important to me at that time. But you were retired. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Can you see the... Mm -hmm. And are we holding? Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So if that will hold a thin fluid, that will hold air. Okay, press it. Here it comes. Back to the vise. You don't need to film this. We're going back to the vise. I haven't moved those two bolts. We're going to tighten these two up, tighten these two up, we'll set those off to the side and we'll tear into something else. Oh, you want me to tape you doing that? Okay, since you weren't, that camera is not facing up at you. Oh. So, we're going back to the vice now. The only vice I have. Oh, <laughs> I wish that was so. No. We're going back to the vise. We're going to tighten these two discharge valves up. The bolts are they're still in there from when we popped them apart. Then I'll take the bolts out, tighten these two up, and we'll set them off to the side for uh, either a later episode or later in this episode. I'm not sure how we're going to uh, cut this all together.
Thank you, you know, folks, I'm going to use this as a little advertisement here. Are you ready to listen to me, Guru? Yeah. Talk into that camera so... I don't I, have to talk into that camera. No. I am used basically... Okay. I, I use that camera for sound. I know. So, I just want you to know, this pan is an antique. Right? Um, what are you storing all your other bolts, your clean bolts in over there? I believe that came out of a refrigerator, didn't it? Yes, it did, dear. And you heard the guru say over there he was using things from a drag. Uh, what are those round things you use? Oh, those, they're wrist pins out of a big engine. Wrist pins out of a big engine? You see, it's not necessary to run down to the local store and buy something new to put everything in. We are Americans and we are trying to make do with what we have. I mean, here's our poor old office chair, which we got out of an old office, and yes, there's no cover on it. But you it leave works. my office chair be. <laughs> but it works for us, and that's what counts. He already talked about his uh, cherry picker over here. And how they made the cherry picker. And over there is his press. What you doing with your mouth? How they put it together. You see, it's not about what you need to go out and buy. If you can use some of the things you already have, you're saving money there and using it to keep your livelihood going. So that's my recycling thing. I think these things are a lot more valuable being used here than they would be in the, scrap pile. in the scrap pile being used to just recycle it. And that's my advertisement. Thank you for watching this episode of The Compressor Guru. Please hit like and subscribe and use the notify bell so you will know when the next new episode is released from The Compressor Guru. God bless you and have a great day.